Hi guys, welcome back. And today in this video, we're talking about GitHub's new Copilot Spaces, a new way to work with code and context. This is pretty cool. So if you have already worked with the Google Notebook, so if I just go and search for Google Notebook, this one, the Google Notebook LM, this is especially used for you to take any notes from different sources. It can be from your PDF file, YouTube videos, or even from your own documentations. You can just put all of them together and then it will create uh, a note for you and it will start answering you the response based on the grounded uh, details that you have got. So this is what is this notebook LM for. This is especially for the documentation that how you work with. But if you want to do exactly pretty much the the same kind of idea with the uh, the code that you have got then welcome to this new uh, copilot spaces this is still in preview mode it is it's fully not released yet it is still in the preview stage but the purpose of this copilot space is quite amazing this is mainly gonna let you ground the knowledge of the copilot in a curated set of specified or specific code documents and notes and more so it's not just about the uh, coding but also with the documents and notes that you add as an additional assets to it and then it is going to give you the answer based on that particular uh, details that it has got so it's going to become like an expert for uh, taking or giving the answer for you based on the question that you are going to give it and the good thing is that it is going to become like a subject matter expert with your own coding repository that you have got because the GitHub Copilot has got access to your own repository. So you then you can start working with it. So by default, if you just go to the github.com slash copilot, the UI looks something like this. You can ask questions and things, and you can see that you can use different models to perform these operations, not just the GPT-40 or 4.1 for that matter. And the good thing is that once you sign in to the GitHub Copilot, now it will start becoming even more better. So while I say it will start becoming even more better, so if I go to the uh, github.com uh, slash copilot over here, which is this homepage, you can see that the window appears something like this, where you can uh, do a lot of things. You can create issues, uh, files, you can uh, create those things, you can create a pull request, and also create an issues and things uh, based on your existing uh, uh, issues that is available within a specified repository. I'm not gonna go talk about these things which is there already for a long time, but I'm gonna talk about these spaces which is currently in the preview stage. As I told you, the spaces is more like a, uh, like a place where you're gonna put all your codes, repositories, and documents in one single place, and then you can start getting answer pretty much like a subject matter expert. This is very, very helpful if you have got multiple repositories and it's all the documents scattered around your company and within that particular organization, if you wanted to ask any questions based on multiple files, uh, source codes and documents that you have got and you need to get an answer specifically like a subject matter expert answer, then you can use these spaces. It is going to be quite amazing. So if I go and create a new space over here and I'm gonna ask, uh, create a space here called as event driven uh, architecture. So this is the application that I have really got. Uh, and I'm just going to, uh, sorry, this is like extra thing. Um, I'm gonna choose the icons, whatever icon that I need, I can choose that. And then I can give a description uh, to this particular space. I'm gonna say that I uh, get the details of your um, EDA application uh, in EA uh, uh, website, something like that, right? And then I'm gonna give the instruction over here. So this is like a system instruction to your copilot so that it will give you more curated result. So basically I'm just targeting the space for giving the responses based on testing. So I can ask that particular, uh, or maybe I can put that particular prompt in there. So I'm gonna say that um, you are an software test architect. So respond the answer based on that for the uh, given question. The answer should be architectural uh, and more technical uh, with problem solving uh, solutions, something like that. Right, so that's gonna be the instruction that I'm gonna give. And now I'm gonna choose the attachment, that's where things comes in, right? Like you can add the text files, 
You can add a file or folder. You can also choose from within your repository. So I'm gonna choose from my own repository, but you can also choose others repository as well if you really wanted to look at that, right? So I'm gonna choose the exit automation for now. And the, uh, the repository is gonna be the event driven architecture. And I can choose many files, like as many files I wanted to. I think there is a limitations, like you can only do like 100 percentage upload, but you can't go beyond that. So at the moment, I'm just gonna say, choose all of them except some unnecessary files. I'm gonna just remove it, uh, which is this uh, .ds store is not even required. I'm gonna choose these files uh, and these files over here, maybe the readme file, right? So there are like 27 files that I have added. See, it's only 21% attachment I have done. But I can attach until like 100% if I wanted to. So if I wanted to go and choose some more, I can also do that. So if I'm gonna choose something like event-driven architecture, if somebody else uh, returned that uh, over here, see that the same kind of project is sitting from somebody else because this is basically a public repository that I'm targeting. Um, that's why these things are gonna come up over here. But if you are gonna be looking within your own company, then you, you don't really necessarily have to choose these details over there, right? So the, let me assume that I'm gonna choose these files as well, just like additional files over there. See that the percentage has increased from 21 to 29 there. So these are the files like a, uh, like a knowledge for my questions that I'm gonna be asking for uh, the event-driven architecture within my organization. So once I have all these informations, again, you can add any number of files from any number of repositories. Once you have everything within your own organization, once you add everything within your organization, then you are ready with the spaces. You can just save this and you can now see that this space become like one single knowledge base for all of these um, these uh, files and you can ask questions based on that. You can also start that if you wanted to, right? Uh, so I'm gonna say, um, how can I write integration uh, tests for my, uh, my application? Can you explain my application uh, like how the architecture is uh, designed, right? So basically make sure that you don't go with the different repositories because I have like multiple repositories chosen in here. Maybe sometimes this guy will go a bit rogue, but at least now it knows what exactly that I'm asking. So it gives me from my own repository, which is the, uh, the event driven architecture repository uh, and then it's giving me the responses here that there is a key component which is the eda customer and the eda inventory and also has got a rabbit mq which is act as a message broker and it has got the services like this and this is the data storage these are the service responsibilities so eda customers it's going to receive a customer request it's going to emit the event to the rabbit mq uh, and then it's gonna listen to the product inventory and it's gonna do all these things over here. And these are the integration points that it has got. And you can also notice that uh, it says that how to write the integration test for your application. These are things that it's gonna give the details for you over there. And it's also adding a pseudocode for you. See, this is now like a one single place, like if a new employee joined through your company and if he has no idea of what this particular repository is, you can ask the questions over there and you can get the responses. Uh, and this is gonna be very, very helpful for any new joiner uh, within your company to understand how this repository is designed and what code is being, uh, being built inside the particular repository. It's pretty cool. And now I can also change the model if I really wanted to. Let's say if I want to use the Cloud uh, Sonar 3.5 or 7, I mean, you need to upgrade for that, but let's just stick with the GPT-4.1 for now and you can ask questions from there. Uh, can you uh, give me the architecture uh, of the application. And if I hit enter, let's see what response is gonna uh, come out from that. And because I'm using for one model, you see that it's basically thinking and also it's giving me the architecture of how this particular application is designed. Uh, and I can now start understanding the things way better and way easier comparing to things that I don't even have over here before. See, now it also gives me like a dissected information like the communication flow, infrastructure, database strategy, deployment, 
um, and the key architectures and also the technology stack has been used and things of that nature, which is quite amazing. And because I'm using RabbitMQ, I can also check what are the uh, topics and uh, the queue being used. So I can say, what are topics and um, queues used uh, in Rabbit um, MQ for my consumer and producer? If I ask that question, look at that immediately. Now this um, entire copilot is going to go and let's say this is the exchange topic that I have got. These are the queues that I have got. And this is the routing keys which has been used. Uh, and what is the um, uh, what is the role of the producer and the consumer in these uh, queues, uh, and how it's been configured uh, within my Rabbit MQ? Uh, and this is the summary table. Look at that! This is amazing. This actually is one of the um, this application is actually from one of my Udemy courses, which is available uh, over here. So we just go and search for. Um, Udemy, Karthik, and you will get to this particular application, the event-driven microservices build and test apps with c .net. This application actually uh, uh, is built and even being tested in this particular course, as you can see over here. And I've took so much time to actually uh, build this application and also uh, test this application to and also help them explaining uh, the application, like how it's been built. But looking at this particular um, uh, GitHub Copilot Spaces, I can see, I can only imagine like how easy it is now for the people who is going to start working with this repository so much easily. Well, that's it there. The last thing is the adding the integration test. So I'm going to say, uh, can we now add the integration test to verify the producers uh, and consumers to consume, uh, to consume the rabbit uh, MQ uh, and also verify uh, the database uh, database layer. And the moment I ask this question, you will notice that um, it's going to start doing things over here. So this is the goal and this is the scope. And you'll also notice that it's also writing the code for you on the right hand side. So you can see that it is doing um, the code over here. So it's using the iClass fixture for the Docker setup. So it's basically going to do some things there. So the Docker setup um, is going to be a class which is going to be invoked once uh, the, the setup is going to be done for you. So let's wait for the code is being written there or not. So I think it's still writing it. And also notice that it, it is writing the customer purchase update inventory and database. So it is writing all of these over here. So um, the, the test is for the consumer and then also to check whether the data is sitting in the inventory. So it is already doing things for me, which is quite amazing. So I'm going to say write the uh, complete uh, test uh, with all scenarios. So I'm just going to go a bit more further. Uh, and asking all the questions over there. So you can you will notice that now the things are gonna pan out for you uh, automatically. And the good thing is, once the code is written for you, you can also create a pull request for the same code that is being written. And you can also check in the same code uh, into the repository. Look at that. So now uh, it's telling me that this is the implementation uh, for the RabbitMQ test helper. So it has already written that over here, like how to uh, invoke the RabbitMQ and how you can write the test over there. So that's the RabbitMQ test helper. Uh, and it also got the end-to-end -end test uh, over there where it is going to write all the tests for me, which is quite amazing. Look at that. Now it's saying that if you need to, uh, if you need a ready to clone test project setup script, and if you want to use the test containers for the full isolation, let me know. So I can say, yes, uh, please include uh, test containers uh, as well. Uh, okay. So once I do that, you will notice that it is also going to include the test containers in it so that we can have an ephemeral test containers execution for the RabbitMQ so that the RabbitMQ need not be deployed from the Docker uh, compose file. Rather, the uh, Docker uh, is going to be set up from the test container for you. Uh, and you will notice that it has already done things for me there, which is quite amazing. And also put all the dependencies. So this is 
this is yet another level for us to use the GitHub Copilot and get all of these operation. For now, it's just free of cost as well. That is pretty amazing. So you don't even have to pay any money for that. And it's still, it's in preview stage. That's the reason why everything is free. And then you can start using this as your uh, place to generate the code for your repository and get the responses out. So hope you like this, uh, this new feature from GitHub Spaces. And I think this is quite amazing, like a one single place uh, to ask all the questions and get the responses. I really like the fact that this is going to be act like a central place to, uh, to uh, really chat with our code and understand how things work. That's it guys. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video. Catch you in the next one.